Hey y'all, welcome to another drift trial analysis, this time for the European non-race car drift trial at Circuit de la Sar. As y'all can see here, I'm in fifth in the world rankings, and at one point I was actually first for about eight hours, and maybe, just maybe, I can get up to first again by the time it's over. But as you can see there, that first place score is pretty high. But it might be possible to get. It would literally need a perfect run, but crazier things have happened. But anyway, I'll go ahead and show you all my tune and the analysis of the line that I took to get to the score that I got. And hopefully this will help you all and I uh, hope you all enjoy. Here's my tune. First off. The tires that I used were sport soft in the front and comfort hard in the rear. A lot of different tire combinations have been used for this one, but it seems like all in all the the best combination for points is what I have, the sport soft in the front, comfort hard in the rear. Some people have been using comfort medium in the rear, which makes the car more stable, but it makes each drift slightly shorter, so you have to balance out the length of each drift and the angle in which you take the drifts, like timing it to get in the max points for each end, like space or whatever. It's hard to explain doing this with an FF car front wheel drive because it's it's not really drifting and honestly it's not nearly as fun as drifting, but I've gotten pretty good at it. So I do it anyway because a lot of people are starting to do it. And honestly, this may sound a bit greedy or whatever, but I want to see USA do good in some drifts. USA hasn't gotten many top fives in drifts. And with this setup, I'm hopefully capable of staying in the top five for this one. But anyway... Here is the tune that I've used. It's pretty much the same as what I used in the Honda ZX video. It is the minimum ride height front and rear and then maximum all the rest of the settings except for tow, which is minimum, as negative as you can go. And for brakes, those don't really matter. You pretty much just used emergency brake or charcoal for default settings on a controller, whatever you use for that. And then transmission is kind of the same as the Z-Act. You reset the gears, put the final gear all the way left, then top speed all the way left, then all of these gears all the way right, then final gear to the number shown there. And then this is sort of a arbitrary number two because you can sort of fiddle with that to whatever you can get your car working the best with my car's running about 38 miles per hour but the leader's using about 37 just use whatever that you can get your car into the best region scoring region or whatever at whatever angle you take that or just be something you have to test yourself and find uh for the differential it's I don't exactly know if the differential matters in a front-wheel drive car, but anyway, it's 60, 65 for mine. For power, everything on, 100% power. I tried it at 75% again, and it didn't really do the best. The only time that 75% power seems to work is if it's a short trial, like 5,000 points or less. And then for... The weight distribution and all that, 200 kilograms at plus 50. Which, this honestly makes the car a lot more loose, which ups the score, but makes it harder to drive. So once again, just tune that to your own risk or whatever. Tune it as much as you can drive it, but don't overdo it and spin out, because it's sort of just fine-tuning with this. Do whatever your abilities can handle. And then learn from your mistakes or whatever and slowly make it 
more and more loose and then as you get it more loose your scores in theory improve and hopefully it does anyway this is to my run here and i'll analyze my run but as y'all can see here i did pretty much the top score i think i can get i think maybe i can get about 100 more points but getting first place is gonna be hard i'll try my best but it's gonna be hard but once again after you watch my analysis definitely do look at the first place replay because he has whatever he's doing down perfectly i i don't know how he was able to do it so nice there but anyway this is my car here painted in good old hemi orange it's real fast like going that whopping 38 miles an hour there and here's coming up to the first bit here and i'll pause the replay here to t show y'all what to do as you, you can see here get to the outside here but not quite onto the rumble strips and then initiate your drift using e-brake as always like i said in the last video you need to use the e-brake if you don't usually use it that'll be something that you need to practice because you use the e-brake to hold all of the drifts and the only time you release the e-brake is to change the direction so as you can see here just sort of do like that make sure on this first section do not turn left for very long just turn left enough to where you can get your car angled back out and under control so you can whip it back right as fast as you can and then stay near the outside but not quite on the outside for the time being until you start getting to this first turn here of this section and slowly start making your way towards the apex but not quite on it again probably about as far out from the inside as you were from the outside at the start and then start turning your car more right to begin with but then angle out at about this point just pause the replay here and you can use whatever landmark will make you remember it like the building over there or whatever and then this is where you start turning left more and making the right hand turns less and then still you get a few points for doing the right hand turn there but still make it pretty quick just enough where you can get your car on the rumble strips but not quite into the grass like this and then start turning your car more towards the middle of the track but once again not quite on the rumble strips and then start preparing for this middle section which honestly this is the section i think that i'm losing the most points all in all i don't really think i'm losing tons of points anywhere to the leader but just as I practice more, hopefully I can iron it out and improve my score a bit. But this is pretty much what you're supposed to do. Not exactly. Like through this section, the leader is able to time it better and not have to stop for about a second to get the car in the right angle. But once you're to the final turn, just angle your car right and get it once again close to the apex but not quite on it keep that going then after the turn ends get to the outside but once again not quite to the outside and angle your car there to the finish line and hopefully you got a good score and honestly i think this is an effective way of doing it but like i said there's stuff to iron out there's stuff to find there's no way to completely get a perfect run the first time around. You gotta practice. I put about maybe 200 miles into this, and I'll try to put some more in and improve my score once more. Here's my replay here as a whole without pausing it, so y'all can see the angle that I was able to get. I hope y'all enjoyed this, and I hope this helped y'all. And remember, just keep practicing, just keep going, because... Well, as you can see from the leader score, there's always improvement to get because as of now, the leader's pretty far out there and obviously I'm pretty sure anybody can
keep on practicing and get a higher score than you ever thought possible because I don't think many people thought the leader was going to get what he got, but we'll see. We'll see. Just keep practicing, just keep racing, and hopefully just keep on improving. Yeehaw.